In this video, we're going to take a introductory look at how we can set up a decision tree. So I'm going to take one of the examples that's provided and uh, show how to set this up. And in the next video, we're going to go into how to uh, create a practical application. So I'm going to say require Ruby gems and then require decision tree and make sure you have decision tree installed on your system or else this won't work and first thing i'm going to do is set up the attributes and this one's going to be really basic it's going to be a single attribute called temp and this is going to uh, be the temperatures for uh, you could say for sick people or not sick people, that kind of thing. Uh, and we're going to decide if they're sick or not. Um, so the training data, and so this is the data that uh, for the big data side, this is what it's going to look like or look at. So this is how we're gonna be training our program on what data it should be analyzing. So let's just put some basic data here. So uh, we'll say that uh, I believe it's 98.7 uh, is going to be healthy. And uh, let's just throw some other values here. So 99.1 is still, uh, pretty healthy 99.5 we're gonna say starting to get a little bit sick 100.5 definitely sick 102 crazy sick and then let's see 107 pretty much dead Okay, so here's some data, and this is what our uh, decision tree is going to look at when it's making its decision. So now let's uh, create the decision tree. And we can do this by calling on the module of decision tree and then uh, passing in the module we want, which is the ID3 tree. And ID3 is, uh, like I mentioned in the last video, it's a decision-making algorithm. So this gives us access to that. So we need to create new instant instantiate it and pass in the first argument, which are attributes. Then we need to pass in our training data. And then we're going to set the default to sick. And we want this to be continuous. And uh, setting it continuous is just kind of the mode that we're setting the decision tree to uh, to run in. So now I'm going to say decision tree and train. Train is a method provided to us by decision tree. And what it's essentially doing is it's taking in this attribute. It's taking in uh, all these values. And then it's taking in what that result is. So this last attribute here, uh, you notice we don't have it. We don't have to put it up here. In fact, we shouldn't because that would uh, be a problem. Um, the temp or anything like this. So we could do temp and we could do like name, but that would be stupid because we wouldn't want to learn something based off someone's name that wouldn't determine if they're sick. Uh, and you could put, you know, Jordan here and uh, you could put Tiffany here and you know, keep going down the line. But uh, that's, that's just to show, I just wanted you to see that uh, the last element in the array of the training data does not is not mapped to uh, one of the attributes. It's simply the result of what the training data and what all the attributes to the left result in. Okay, so we have that training data. Now that we have that, now we have to set up the data that we actually want to test. So I'm going to say test, and let's do an easy one. We'll do one of 98.7, and we'll say uh, healthy. Okay, and this healthy part is just because we're testing the algorithm. In a real world scenario, we would just be passing 98.7 because we wouldn't know if they're healthy or not. But this is to test to see if our algorithm is working. So I'm going to create two uh, put statements here. I'm gonna say uh, prediction 
and say that this is, let's see, for, for the decision tree, or I'm sorry, for the decision. And let's see. And this next one is going to be reality. And reality we can just grab by getting test last right over here. Okay, and now we just have to set up our decision. So set up a decision variable and say the deck underscore tree. And then we call a the predict method and we pass in the test data. So all we're doing here is we're calling our decision tree, which has been trained. So it's been trained because it's taken in all these variables. And we're calling the predict method, which is what the decision tree gem provides. It's a built-in method where we can take that and then pass in the argument of the test data. It'll take it here. It'll compare it against all the data it's been trained against, and then it'll give a prediction. So we want to see what the prediction is, and then we see what reality is by taking in this value. So let's print this out and see if this works. So Ruby, and I name this file decision and it prints out healthy and healthy which we knew would be the way it, that it should be so now let's see what happens if we put in 107.5 and see what it gives us here and the prediction is dead which is right so what this is doing is going through the training data it's comparing it and then it's bringing back whatever that decision should be now you may wonder you may think oh this is stupid you know that'd be really easy you could set a if, if else statement and some comparisons and that's very very true if you were working with small amounts of data like this but this is a big data module so this is not this is simply uh, so that you can see all the data right here and make it a little bit easier to understand in a real life scenario say you're creating something like this with a bunch of more parameters and you're creating it for a hospital you'd be having probably thousands if not hundreds of thousands or even millions of data points and it would not be practical to create some basic if else statements uh, you need something a lot more robust like a decision tree to be able to generate results so uh, this shows that uh, for a base case this works and in our next video we're going to take the same type of approach and the same concept except we're going to add more attributes and show how we can make a, uh, a decision that's a little bit more practical something you could use in a real world scenario